they have mutual respect, and that's cool to see. Chase Sexton and Hunter Lawrence. What we don't see here is Lawrence up front. First time this year he's really been buried. Adam Cianciarulo with a good start. No surprise, though, to see Adam Cianciarulo up front. Been a great starter his whole career, and I love seeing it. I think he's showed a lot. And then you go first lap right there. Sexton, he goes to cut back across that inside rut. When he does that, the inside rut grabs his front front wheel and pulls him down and then he over jumps there. He lands into the soft dirt where some of the soft dirt was pushed off to the side. He almost falls, but he remounts, gets back on the track and really that's all we would hear from him from uh, Moto1. Yeah, he finished ninth. So much battling here. Seems Rulo was going at it, trying to hold on a second. Plessinger takes it away on the number seven. And these races are hard for me to like call because you like these guys are so close. This is where we all wanted to see what Jet could do. Yep. Come from behind. We finally got our wish and he made it happen. And not that I didn't think that he would. I don't think I shouldn't speak for you, but I'm sure. No, you I didn't. I didn't think it'd be a problem. Yeah. Uh, well, it actually but took it was, longer than I thought. But it was honest. cool. What I really yeah. enjoyed and I hope the viewers at home watching today, I hope they enjoyed to watch what Jet was able to do and watch the other racers that he hasn't really be, been able to race against race with him and how they would react. I, it, was, it was a lot of fun for me. I learned a lot from all of these riders and Jet. But the last one right here, Plessinger for the lead. Tires were sliding, didn't even take the rut. Go, it going for it. I yep. mean, just absolutely going for it. Confidence. And there is the come from behind Moto win. He was on the ropes a little bit at high point earlier in the year with Roxon and a couple other riders. Seen Trullo had a good run that day. But that was the real come from behind. He was not coming from behind in Moto2. Hey, I'm going to tell you all right now, you know how hard it is to get a bike length start against the best guys in the world riding dirt bikes? Really hard. And that was a perfect start. Barsha shoots up the inside to take second away from Cian Cerullo, but Chase Sexton was much better this time. Here he is around Barsha for the number two position. Yeah, we didn't get an opportunity to hear just how Chase Sexton would end up falling down, but man, man, did he reel in the gap really fast. I mean, listen, all season long, we know that he has the speed. I don't know why, I, I like we talk about it all the time. It's like, like it's a surprise or something, but the dude is fast. And he goes down while challenging Jet for the lead. We thought it was over. Stay tuned, spoiler alert, it's not. Meanwhile, behind him, unbelievable duel between yes. Barsha and Plessinger. This was a real fun battle to watch, Weege. I had a fun time calling this race with you. It's like, they were just waiting. I felt like uh, AP rode this race very, very smart and strategic. And what I mean by that, he waited. I think he knew in the back of his mind that JB probably didn't have the gas to go the full way. And look at this, last lap. Lawrence had a few problems and Sexton gets close. Yeah, if you listen to the uh, post-race interview, um, Jetson got caught up, I think maybe a red cross flag or couldn't trip or what have you. And man, that allowed Chase Sexton to close the gap and I thought Sexton was gonna get him. This is it, final turns. Both riders in the same shot, but the perfect season stays alive. Jet Lawrence, 20-0 in his debut season on a 450 with one race to go. There's that mutual respect we saw at the beginning of the day. Again, with on the podium and Plessinger ends up second overall. Anderson in third. Sexton with that bad first moto still ends up fourth with the second in moto number two. Barsha fifth overall, but he rode better than that all day. He was in contention for the podium. Not bad for look a rider. How, look how tight those points three. were right there with like Sexton, Barsha. I mean, that's close. That, that kind of indicates what this right. race was like today. It was, I, uh, we talked about it off air, Lamb. This, this yep. 450, this 450, or 450 class is interesting today. I loved it. Yep. Lawrence already has the title sewn up. He did that last week. The gap over Ferrandis, who has not clinched second in the standings, but it would be very difficult for Plessinger to take it away from him. Ferrandis was sick today and then crashed in the first turn of Moto2, so that held him back in the results. Seen Cirillo and Sexton top five in points. Sexton has missed a couple races this year, but it's not over after our season finale for Motocross next weekend. For the first time ever, the Super Motocross World Championship fueled by Monster Energy. We're gonna race in Charlotte, Chicago, and Los Angeles on September 9th, 16th, and 23rd, respectively. Let's show you the uh, standings there. Sexton as your Monster Energy Supercross champ and rapidly rising back in the points of motocross. He has the most combined points this year. Plessinger and Cian Cerullo are top three. Lawrence is only fourth because he did not race a 450 in Supercross. But shout out to Cian Cerullo, man. The goal all year has just been get in laps, get in races. He has done it. Third in combined points means a lot uh, for a rider who's trying to rebuild himself after barely racing at all.
in 2022. So those are your standings. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.